Hello, my name is Aaron and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be looking at five things you should know about the Sony A5100. First feature is the time lapse feature. You might be thinking, does this camera have a time lapse feature? Well, it does, but you have to get it from the in camera app store, which is called the Play Memory Store. Now this is a little bit of a faff to get set it up on. Basically you need a Sony login. Now interestingly if you already have a PlayStation with an online account, you can use the login details from that interestingly. So if you've already got your bank and your card details set up through there, you can use that. Now the other downside of this app is that it costs $7.99 UK. I'm not sure what it is, that is in dollars, it might be about $10. So it's frustrating if you've already got a camera to shell out extra for this feature. But I'll show an example of it now. I think the time lapses that you can get from this app are really worthwhile. Here's how you get to the app store through the camera and where the app should be. Go to application, application list, and then play memories camera app. You should get to the menus here, which have all the different apps you can buy. Now there's loads of other ones. This is the only one I've tried as it's the only one that's come out as highly recommended. And I would say it's almost a must buy for this camera. It works so well <laughs> and to buy a timer controller is way more expensive than this. So yes, frustrating for this feature to not be built in, but it works, it works really well. So that's my first tip. My second tip is the auto review feature. Now this is a good setting to turn on or off depending on your needs. Basically what it means is that once you take a photo, it'll, you can review that photo straight away on the screen. Now I think it defaults to two seconds, which I do leave it on a lot of the time because a lot of the time you want to take a photo and then look at it straight away. However, if you wanted to take a lot of photos in quick succession, say you're trying to catch something that's moving, you don't necessarily want to wait two seconds between each shot being taken. So what you can do is you can turn that feature off or you can even bump it up to I think 10 seconds is the other option that you can have now if you say you want to take a photo and show it to people for 10 seconds. So to get to this setting you go to settings and then tab 2 and then auto review and then you can see here the options of 10, 5, 2 seconds and then off completely. I swap between these different features depending on what type of shooting I'm doing. My third tip is a, is a feature they call autofocus illumination. Now you may have noticed on the front of this camera there is a little light just below the Sony logo. Now this light is a red indicator LED which basically in low light situations if the autofocus is struggling to focus. Now, I find this quite frustrating. It might work for some people in certain situations, but generally if it's low light situation, a bright red light in someone's face, especially taking a photo of someone, is just gonna make them squint. It doesn't help anyone. I can see that it's not focusing very well on the screen. I don't need a light to tell me. So luckily you can turn this off. You don't have to put a sticker over the light. So to turn this feature off, or turn it on if you find a use for it. I've struggled to find a use for it, but I'm just glad that you can turn it off. On the menu, go to camera settings, tab three, and then AF illuminator. And you see here, it has the, set, the options of auto and off. I have this off all the time. I don't see, I don't see the point. I generally even find that if you take a photo quite quickly, you sometimes still have the red glow on a photo, which is just, no, no, don't, don't need it. So the fourth setting I want to talk about is custom button settings. Now, a downside of the Sony 5100 is the lack of buttons. There's no function buttons programmable as default, so you really got to work with what's there. Now, I feel like most of the buttons are reasonably well laid out of what they do, and they are labelled on the back of the camera as what they do. So if you change them around too much, in my opinion, it get a bit too confusing. However, there's one button which I don't use at all, so I think it's worth reprogramming, and that is the little question mark button on the bottom right of the camera. From default, that goes to an in-camera guide settings. Now this just gives you tips on how to use the camera. I've never once pressed this button and used it. So, luckily, you can reprogram this button or any of the other buttons to do exactly what you want from the feature list. The one I'm going to suggest today is the IAF, which is the autofocus on someone's eye. Again, I only occasionally use this, so browse the options available 
and see if there's something that works better for you. I might not stick with this long term, but it's certainly more useful to me currently than the in-camera guide, which I don't use for anything. So to get to this setting, go to settings, and then tab five, and then custom key settings. So here you can see the choices of programmable buttons, and the question mark button is in there. So, and then here is the list of all the settings which you can change it to, with IAF being the one I pick. My fifth and final tip for the Sony A5100 is about video quality. Now, hopefully, this video, you might think, this is in pretty good quality. Now, now, we know that this camera only does 1080p video, but there are a few settings that you can change to make this as high a quality as possible. There are a few different things that you have to do to be able to turn these settings on, so I'll go through those with you now. So the first thing you need is a certain type of memory card. This is called an SDXC memory card. This type of memory card means that the data can transfer from the camera to the memory card quicker, meaning that you can have a higher bitrate on your videos and I think it does, does also process stills a little quicker as well so worth doing. They will be more expensive and you do need to get high capacity if possible because it will use double the amount of data to store than the default video settings. So the setting that you need is called XAVCS. Now this is on the camera menus. So to get to this go to camera then tab 2, file format and you'll see AXVCS. It may be greyed out if you have the wrong type of memory card in, I don't think it'll even let you select it. The, the other settings are good, but if you want the absolute highest quality, this is what you need to do. And then below that, on the menu, you can see here that you can change that to the highest settings, which is 50p, 50m, which is the highest quality, 50 frames per second. So these are the best possible video settings for this camera. As I said, it takes up a lot more storage on the memory card as it's twice the bit rate compared to AVC HD, which is also a great setting, especially if you've already got a memory card and can't afford or don't want to buy another one. Those settings are fine, but this is just the way to get the absolute top video settings for your vlogs, YouTube. So if you've bought this camera just for video, this is a great setting for you because it means you're getting absolute maximum for the money that you have spent. So there we go, that's five quick tips for the Sony A5100. As always, if you've enjoyed, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back soon with more videos, but that's it from me for now. Cheers.